Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you some of the um, stuff that I have been doing with the Laser Packer 4 laser engraver. In my last video showed you that I can do some tiles. So this is Norton uh, method. So those uh, tiles painted with a titanium dioxide. The image is etched onto a white tile. The laser packer did some amazing details on the white tiles. So I thought this time I'm going to show you something different. So these are some samples of what the laser packer 4 can do with a standard black coated aluminium card. So these are metal card with a coating on top. And the infrared laser burns away the coating, leave behind um, the aluminium surface and you actually um, etch onto the surface as well so at the laser eats away the coating it leaves behind the blacks and that's why when you do burn the image um, you have to invert it so this is 1k resolution 2k resolution and 4k resolution so if you are into laser then you know that the dot per inch is the measurement of how how fine the laser is and there is a limit on how fine you can um, burn an image because the dot size become too big for your resolution then it's become blur now laser packer has their own kind of a system so um, if 1k resolution is actually uh, 254 dot, dot per inch which is showed by this card right here okay so this card here is done by um, the laser packer 4 using the 1k resolution and you can still see clearly the um, the dot size so the whole image is made by a tiny little dot, which is burned by the laser. And if you move on and use a 2K resolution, this is the same image without editing like lighter color or darker color. So this is a 2K uh, resolution. So at 508 um, dot per inch. And you can see that you, now you have to look very closely to try and catch the dot which makes up the image. And because this one has a lot more uh, movement, so the laser have to move backward and forwards a few more times in between each, la uh, each layer. So that's why this, uh, this one takes a lot longer. Now, if we, if we carry on and let the software decide to use a higher resolution. So for example, this one here is a 4K image. So this one is 1016 dot per inch. And you can see that the image is actually less sharp than the one before. And that is because the dot per inch now is actually higher than the actual physical uh, laser dot size. So you still create a very good image as you can see the tiger here, but it takes like, you know, four times as long, if not more. And actually I think the image quality is that better at 2K uh, resolution. So here, a lot of these are downloaded from uh, LaserPix, so they are free to use images. And um, I don't claim credit for AI creations or anything like that. This is pure taken off on the internet. Um, these are two photos which I take from my iPhone um, 12 Pro and just laser straight onto the card. And if you want to check out how fine details or how amazing the details are, I think this one showcases it quite well. I think this one is just capture the details amazingly. If you look at the details on the eyes, it's like, you know, you can actually tell the eye shadows. And obviously the clothing, they all embrace with a fine detail. So I think this is what the strength of the Laser Packer 4 lies compared to um, other laser engraver on the market. I think to get even better engraving than this, you'll be looking at like a Mopar, that kind of um, fiber laser. Um, I won't call this a fiber laser, even though I think some of the marketing department in laser packer start calling this a fiber laser. This is not a fiber laser. A fiber laser has fiber optics which convey the strong laser into the mirror. This one actually is an infrared um, dial laser. So let's do one together and I can show you from start to finish and you can um, see how long it will take to engrave as well. So let's find an image for engraving. So my go-to website is um, laser-pick.com. This is a website run by other laser uh, experts. 
and there is like a paid version and free version i'm going to go with the free version at the moment but credits go to people who actually create the image so this one is by matthew and i christmas around the corner so i want to engrave this one onto a aluminium card so he done it already and it looks like this i think it was quite a cute picture so i'm going to do the same and then i'm going to click download original so now i download this onto my hard drive and then I will go into the Laser Packer design space. So this is the PC software which comes with the Laser Packer 4. And you come to the home page, so I've done a bunch of um, projects already. So we go to create a new file. And then you need to connect to the device before you can see your work area. So I wake up my, so I wake up my Laser Packer 4 and then click connect the device. Um, depends on which um, USB port you're using. I click on COM4. And that's it. Because I got the slider extension, so this is my work area. It's a lot longer because the slider moves up and down. Now I go to click on the icon here, which is a picture with a plus logo. And then you click on the image that you want to engrave. So this one here, so this one is a PNG file that I downloaded just now. The dimension is 896 by 1344. I will let uh, LaserPacker software handle the rest, so I'm not going to do anything at the moment. So I click open. So now it's imported onto my um, engraving area. So now I go to effect and I change to dither. So basically the computer will work out um, how the laser fire um, and the dot space between will be the shading of your image. Now, I'm not going to change anything to do with the contrast brightness and all that. That will be more expert level that can come later on. And because we are now engraving on a black card, so um, you have to click inverse color. Now, this look nothing like how the end image will be, but don't worry about that either. Now, the business card that we use um, they are around 55 uh, millimeter wide and the other tip is that I like engraving it sideways um, I find that give me a more consistent um, engraving across the range so what I want to adjust now is to make sure this is slightly just one mil or two mil bigger than my card size so um, I will change the height to let's say 56 and then the the width is now 84 now my card is 85 by 55 so this will become too small we still need to do fine adjustment later but what I like to do is I like to make it slightly bigger than my card so if I change um, the height to 86 is what I want and then use a line function here on the top make it into the middle so now I'm happy with the image or where it's going to get engraved now I need to go and change the laser um, setting so on the side here at the moment is um, recycled paper and to be honest, if you doesn't matter what you choose, if you're going to change the um, parameters anyway. But just for consistency, you if you click on it, you can choose different material. And I'm going to choose aluminium dioxide. Resolution, I like it to be on 2K because that's giving me the more um, details. And 1064 nanometer, so that's the infrared range of the laser. Pass, I'm only going to do one pass. Power, I find for this kind of card, a 90% power and just 5% depth. And then you go on to preview. Okay, as we click uh, preview, it will show you a laser blue line right here. So this is to show you where the laser is going to start. And because this is a moving bed, so as the laser start to sweep, the bed will move that direction. Therefore, it will engrave the whole card eventually. So what we do is we put the laser, we put the card right by the laser here. And because I was engraving a different material earlier, so I can see that there's two red dots right here, which means that I'm out of focus. 
So that I need to just move it up and down until the two dots of laser merge. Now this is really, really important because if the laser is out of focus, then your image will look rubbish. Now there's no right or wrong way to um, do your own focusing. For me, I personally like to go all the way until the dots separate and then all the way until they um, separate the other direction. And then you just count how many and just half that amount. And then you make sure the laser line is um, level with your uh, card. Now I'm going to press the, um, the continue button so that will move the laser bed. And now I'm happy with that and I will turn on the extractor fan. And this contraption here is where I exhaust it out of the house. Um, I don't like uh, too much burning smell here. Eventually I will close up this area. And you can see that I don't have my cone on, so make sure you do some eye protection. Okay, so now it's engraving the tile, so I can actually stop the engraving. And let's have a look at the results. So I think this is uh, pretty amazing, don't you think? Now, I'm a strong believer of showing you all the mistakes that I made, so you learn from it as well. So, for example, the top edge right here. So, obviously, I didn't align it exactly square to the laser line. That's why I always say, you know, try to make the image a bit bigger than your card. The bigger it is, the more margin for error. Some people use a jig so that they get it exact the same time. I'm more like a freestyle player, so, you know, sometimes you learn from your mistake, but... I'm not that well prepared, but this gives me a chance to do this again. Just show you how repeatable this is. I'm just going to flip the card around and do it one more time, but this time I make the image at least two or three mils bigger. And because the ratio is locked, if I increase the size of any edge, then you know it will increase the size uh, of both ways. So 86 wide is not wide enough, so let's do 88. And then I do the preview again. And I am going to move the cart to roughly the area again. And this time I pay attention to where the laser is ending. And even the 88 mil is still a little bit uh, So let's do a 90. Or 89. So this time there should be no chance of me not engraving any parts of the card. Now obviously you can only do this if the image is kind of uh, subjects in the middle. Otherwise you need to be really really accurate about this. So for me this is easily the most um, repeatable good result that you can get from a laser packer 4. So this is the one with the mistake on the corner and this is the one without the mistake in the corner so let okay you let's the squirrel have a real close-up to you 
I think this is the closest I can get it to, but as you can see, catch it like so. Merry Christmas! And why not customize your envelope for the cards? This is cheap envelopes from Amazon. And um, yeah, add your own design and then put the cart inside for extra special Christmas gift for not a lot of money so this will be the end of this video thank you very much for watching um, yeah, so Laser Packer 4, I had it for three weeks now and I've been using it every weekend for the last um, couple of weekends and I have so much fun with it and it can do a lot of things that the dial laser I had before couldn't do. For example, the fine details that you get on aluminium card at the 2K resolution or 508 dpi. So I could never get my Autumn Stack X30 Pro or the X20 Pro to get to the level of fine detail this has. And the other advantage, obviously, I have, I'm not going to show you guys today because it's too cold to go outside. With my portable 250 volt uh, power station, I can actually take this machine to a bench in the park or to exhibition to actually do this on the go. And you don't have to connect the LP4 to a PC. You can actually use your phone app to do the same. It's a bit more cumbersome, but actually you can actually use an iPhone, take a photo and then use the uh, laser packer phone app and um, laser engrave on the go um, that opens so much possibility for uh, DIYers or um, craft fair as such I hope you enjoyed my video and if you find my information useful don't forget to share like and subscribe to my channel for more content see you next time bye bye